Hi, this is Dr. Mark Fryman, the Chief of Hepatobiliary and Pancreatic Surgery at St. Joseph Medical Center. Today's medical tutorial is on the Whipple procedure, extent of lymphadenectomy. Uh, it is important to first understand uh, the different lymph node stations of the pancreas. Uh, essentially there are anterior pancreatic duodenal nodes which lie along the anterior border of the uh, pancreas and duodenum and then there's posterior ones which lie uh, underneath. This is um, the first station. The second station nodes are along the uh, common hepatic artery um, which can be seen in, in this area and along the superior mesenteric uh, artery. So those, these are state, second station nodes along with hepatoduodenal nodes. Um, this is the common bile duct. So these, these would be hepatoduodenal lymph nodes. These are common hepatic. Uh, these are obviously SMA. Um, so these, are, these we consider the second station. And then third station would be out in the neck of the body of the pancreas. Um, so these are anterior pancreatic duodenal. These are post, posterior pancreatic duodenal nodes. So these are the, uh, th the three main stations. Um, and several large studies have been performed um, that do demonstrate, like with other cancers, such as gastric cancer, where this has been looked at extensively, especially by the Japanese, um, lymph node uh, metastasis do tend um, to progress from, st from station 1 to station 2 to station 3. Uh, in other words, the majority of patients with lymph node positive disease will have uh, disease in the anterior and posterior pancreatic duodenal nodes before um, lymph nodes metastasis spread in this direction. So the area of interest, um, and there are four randomized trials now that have uh, looked at this, is the retroperitoneal lymph nodes. Um, and just to review, this is the un uh, this is the uncinate process. This is the head, um, and the uncinate process goes up to the superior mesenteric artery, um, and this is the area where we call this is the area that's called the uh, retroperitoneal margin, and there are lymph nodes um, in this region here, which is the uncinate retroperitoneal area going up to the celiac nodes and then the common hepatic nodes, which we talked about. Um, so they are clearly um, are situations where these nodes, I think, may be positive when common hepatic nodes um, uh, or hepatoduodenal nodes may be negative. Uh, the question is, does removing these nodes um, prolong survival or do they just help prognostically? Um, the area of interest, however, is especially when there are, are cancers of the uncinate process uh, in this region. Uh, it is conceivable that these lymph nodes may become positive uh, sooner than anterior and posterior hepatoduodenal nodes. Um, as I had mentioned before in previous videos, we tend to um, concentrate uh, on this area here because quite frequently this is the area where um, one can sacrifice the potential to achieve an R0 resection uh, and end up with an R1 resection. Uh, we adopted uh, doing the superior mesenteric artery uh, approach first uh, when we began uh, doing vein, more vein resections um, and uh, have become adept with it and now perform all our Whipple or almost all our Whipple procedures by performing the artery uh, first and that means before division of the neck. So we, we isolate the superior mesenteric artery uh, at the takeoff of the aorta and below uh, the neck of the pancreas, take the inferior pancreatic duodenal vessels first and completely skeletonize the SMA allowing access to this retroperitoneal lymph node packet. Um, we don't routinely remove these lymph nodes for tumors away from it, 
away from the uh, uncinate. However, uh, when there is uncinate cancer or head cancers that extend to the uncinate, um, we will actually spend the extra time, which isn't more than 10 or 15 minutes, removing the lymph nodes at the base of the SMA and celiac uh, uh, artery. Now, there are four randomized trials, and we must always keep in mind evidence-based medicine. There are four randomized trials uh, that have looked at the extent of the retroperitoneal lymphadenectomy with respect, with respect to survival. Um, there's an Italian trial. Um, there's a large trial uh, from Hopkins uh, by Dr. Charlie Yeo that, that was, um, has, has the largest number of patients. There's a Mayo Clinic uh, trial. Uh, and, and a Japanese trial. So the four randomized trials which essentially show that the, the addition of the retroperitoneal lymphadenectomy does not improve uh, survival. And for that reason, we do not routinely perform retroperitoneal lymphadenectomies. Um, oh, uh, however, having said that, um, we do think that uh, there is some prognostic uh, value that the medical oncologist um, can potentially, the radiation and medical oncologists can potentially change their management based on uh, whether or not these retroperitoneal nodes are involved. Uh, for tumors of the uncinate process or tumors of the head invading through the uncinate when this part of the resection is uh, difficult and uh, we want to make sure we're obtaining an R0 resection, in that subset of patients we will extend uh, the retroperitoneal lymphadenectomy. Uh, we don't always remove the nodes uh, below the renal vein or on, on top of the cava. Um, I personally don't feel that those are the nodes of interest. I, I feel the nodes of interest are the nodes at the base of the SMA. Uh, there's a lot of nerve tissues in this area where pancreatic cancer cells uh, travel and the base of the celiac. And what's interesting when removing this lymph node packet, it actually peels off and communicates with the um, common hepatic lymph nodes um, quite easily. So the addition of this lymph node packet um, is not routine, but is clearly uh, done in situations where we're concerned uh, that the uncinate process uh, margin may be positive, or in situations where we think that the anterior station nodes or post anterior and posterior station nodes are could be negative, uh, but that there may be tumor extension um, in this uh, direction.